I hope you can hear me. Yes, yes I can hear you. Thank you very much. So good yes, morning. Please. Welcome. This is our last unit in the course, UGRC 150, Critical Thinking and Practical Reasoning. Uh, my name is Dr. Nancy Miles Bafo This is 2024 January. I'm addressing our main campus, Group 1. The content do, like I always say, can serve all groups if a member of that group wants to access it because the content is the same for all groups. We are discussing the very final unit, like I said, which is titled Informal Fallacies. We have seen the word fallacy since day one of our interaction. When you got yourselves introduced to the course, we showed you that when you hear the word fallacy, it just means an error in the way you are reasoning. There's an error, there's a mistake in the way you are reasoning. You are, you are grounding your claims with evidence. How you are doing it generates a problem. And so we call it out, we point it out, we, we flag you red that this is not acceptable. Okay. So you've seen fallacy since then. Now, it was more prominent in Unit 6 when we discussed formal fallacies like the fallacy that affirms the consequent, the fallacy that denies the antecedent, the false hypothetical syllogism. They were formal fallacies. And you know why we call them formal. You must know that now, even better than you did before the I came, because you will now be focusing on Unit 6, 7, 9, 10 only for your final exam. So the questions will all come from there. And that's a final exam. It's not an interim assessment to see that. OK, so you know formal fallacy. Then unit nine, last week, we saw causal fallacies. Genetic fallacy we saw is one of them. We also saw a post hoc, ego propter hoc. So confusing cause with effect, effect et cetera. Okay. There are also fallacies. But we group them, we label them as causal fallacies because of the nature of those errors. They are all errors arising from the way we are reasoning causally. We are diagnosing the causes for things. In unit 10, which is what we are seeing now, we are going to engage informal fallacies. That should contrast, that should be the opposite of what you saw in unit 6, which is what formal fallacy. Fallacies that arise as a result of disobeying the rule of the form. There is a form, a pattern to obey, but you go contrary to that. Then we'll say you have committed a fallacy of the form, an error of the form, unit six. See, here we are not really interested in a disobedience of the form. We are not calling out you're disobeying a form or a pattern because there isn't any pattern that we say you have disobeyed. No. So what, what then is a formal, uh, is an informal fallacy? That is where unit 10 will be engaging. So the examples you see on your screen now, examples one all the way to 12 are labels, types of what? Informal fallacies, which we like to uh, uh, title as what? Rhetorical, look look at your, your, your screen. Rhetoric, eh? rhetoric, rhetorical ploys and polemical tricks. That is just another way of saying informal fallacies. So we think of these, fallacies whose names you see there, the particular fallacies are there, evocation, begging the question. Look at your screen, please. Appeal to force, appeal to pity, all the way to semi-attached feet. Yeah. They are all informal fallacies. Those are their particular names, but we will group them shortly under some umbrella. So I teach this, this with those who go to the academic channel, you can play the uh, last semesters recording is more recent, okay? That will be 20, 2023, second semester. You will see that I, I use the categorization of uh, diseases under, under bacteria, virus, and fungi, okay? To show you that we can have particular diseases, but when we want to group them, we can group some of the diseases under viruses. So HIV is a virus. Then we can group some under bacteria and some are fungi. These are groupings. And so when we move to the next slide immediately after this, when we go through it, 
we'll see that we have T. Look at your screen now, please. Kinds of informal fallacies. So fallacies that have to do with the relevance of the premises to the conclusion. Fallacies of what relevant. So we are calling out an error. We are flagging something wrong. And that thing we are flagging to be wrong arises from we questioning the relevance of what the premises to the conclusion. The person is speaking in a certain way and giving you evidence to support what he or she is saying. But we see a fallacy. That fallacy belongs to this category if this is the problem we see with it. See, what's the problem? If we see that there is something wrong with the relevance of what the person is saying to the conclusion. So we see, we think that there is an error. And the, and the error we see in your reasoning has to do with what you are saying, what is the relevance of it to the conclusion you are drawing, okay? There are cat categories of fallacy that belong there. There are fallacy types that belong to this broad category. So you can think of several diseases and as varied as they may seem and distinct as they may seem, you are able to group them together. Look at HIV and look at COVID, yet they are all viruses, you see. HIV is an STD, and so you see, it's a sexually transmitted disease, supposedly, okay? But it belongs together with COVID when you want to label them as what? Viruses. So you can group the individual fallacies we saw on the first page and the other fallacies of relevance, look on your screen, or fallacies of weak induction. So think of this as a bacteria. Still dealing with informal fallacies, but the type that the error is as a result of what weak weakness. When you induce, we say the induction is either strong or weak. Now you remember, a strong induction is highly probable. Granted that the premises were true, the conclusion is highly probable. The probability is high. Now, when the probability is low, it means even if we accepted the premises to be true, the chances that the conclusion will follow is very less or small, we will say it is a weak induction. Now we are telling you that there are certain fallacies, errors in the way the person is reasoning. That error is emanating from the weakness of the induction being made, okay? The person is inducing a conclusion and we are saying that that argument is very weak and that is what makes it fallacious, okay? Then there is a third one, the fallacies that manipulate language and statistics. Statistics has to do with figures, data, okay? So you are manipulating it. Ooh, ching, ching. Now, Adenas, you are manipulating it. You are twisting it here and there to fit. That is also a categorization of informal fallacies. So you will see that I'm going back to the first slide. And all these 12 particular diseases, eh? particular fallacies, will be grouped under the three main, uh, if you like, categorizations we identify. Like the way we find uh, three main, if you like, categorizations of what? Diseases, uh, viruses, bacteria, fungi. Think of it that way, and it will help you understand fallacies of relevance, fallacies of weak induction, and fallacies that manipulate language. Immediately then, you will see that sometimes there can be overlaps. Mm -hmm. There can be overlaps. So a, a, a particular fallacy may fall within one or two. That is why the categorization is not our headache too much. Know the particular fallacy first. Then where to place it will be a secondary matter. Okay, Sakina's hand went up earlier. If someone else wants to read, please keep your hand up so that I will know how to allocate my time. Very good. So we start with Sakina. Jaya's hand is up and Abel in that order in Farida. Go ahead, Sakina. Please read what you see on your screen. I want to go straight to rhetorical ploys. Rhetorical blocks and polemical tricks. If the go ahead. speech Ejaya, please read for us. Okay. Good morning. Good morning. Rhetorical ploys and polemic 
technical tricks. If the speech is designed to argue a point with the intent to manipulate the listener or the reader into believing there is a legitimate, legitimate basis for dissent, but in fact provides none, then the argument is called polemic and the reasoning is described as polemical. Sometimes we are moved to accept or reject claims based on psychological inducements. Something is said in connection with a claim that elicits or is intended to elicit a psychological response of some sort. A desire, fear, some feeling of emotion that may well induce acceptance of the claim. Well done, well done. Yeah, you do very well. I hope that it shows in your performance. You read very well. Everyone does, too. but uh, why are they? Now, everyone listen. So your colleagues- Madam, please, you can I hear. Please, I, I would prefer you said I can hear because I'm shouting. <laughs> Class, can you hear me, please? Yes, 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 I was going to explain to you that, so we, we have gotten ourselves well introduced to informal fallacies. And we are saying that they come, they present in two main ways, okay? Sometimes the person is manipulating you to join them, disagree with something. Dissent means to disagree. Accent, we are waiting for the president to accent to the bill whatever bill that went to him okay to accent means to agree to dissent me dissent means eh, dissent, i said dissent dissent means to disagree or to to get yourself away from it see that so sometimes people present a supposed evidence in the bid to co uh, convince you to disagree with a view dissent but they haven't really argued. That is what we are calling out. It is not an argument, it's not premises. They either induced you induction, okay, or they poisoned you, so to speak, polemic. Uh, they, so they are not giving you reason. It's a psychological inducement. That's why, look at the title. It's a ploy, as a uh, uh, an entanglement, an entrapment. Okay, it is a ploy or a trick. Casade, sweet talk, rhetoric. I always use that. I say play those who can. When you, you have time, you can play the recording I shared on the side. When the enemy came into the garden, he didn't. He, he wasn't poisonous. So. He used sweet talk. Rhetoric. The same way when the fraud staff met you at the Trotro station there. It is rhetoric, nice language. Before you knew it, you, you took home a piece of yarn that you thought was a phone that you got at a cheap price. Okay, the person is not offering you reasons. He's just inducing you. And sometimes it is explicit, but at other times it is subtle, it's hidden. So we want to show you those ones so that the one that is uh, subtle, you can, you can detect it when you engage. So take note of the two, psychological inducement, to induce you to support, yeah, to accent to something. Then the other one is to manipulate you to dissent, to disagree with it or to run away from it. When we see the appeal to search and stuff like that, you imagine I told you that, look, finish typing this web as document before, 12 noon today, otherwise consider yourself fired. The way you work like a machine in today's Ghana, <laughs> that there is no way. Even if you are dying, you will be typing your head off. Maybe you wanted to just tell the person, let me take a sip of, you can't. You see, it is, there is no reason of it. So we'll take them one one day, you see. You are just being threatened. Imagine we tell you, well, if you don't do our bridge for us, we'll show you Pepe. 24 December. Hey, what do I keep saying 24 December? <laughs> uh, 7 December. That is, that is threat. 
This is the, the, uh, the voters threatening the MP or whatever. The same way, if the uh, powerful person or the political party in power also says that, look, you people, if you don't vote for you now, we are doing everything, we are not voting for us. We'll see how your voting goes this December. If it doesn't go well, then that's your bridge. You must know that you'll be there for another eight years. That's also a threat. You did, they, nobody lifted a gun. But it's a threat. It's a kill to threat. We'll see them. It's subtle. It's hidden. Kofi, Kofi, yo, go and bath for, go and bath. If you don't bath, we'll see who will give you food this evening. So the reason why I should bath is because you give me food, you see. Now, imagine if I can buy food for myself, then bath him, bad yeah. Look at the young guys, most of them, at SHS, where the food comes before they even enter SHS. When they return some, mm, <laughs> they are sleeping cloth and they are chapel cloth. If you open it, you get kata. Because there is no reasoning why they should bath. <laughs> they should bath. It was all compulsion. God says, come, let us reason together. I want to say the preamble well. So when we start going into it, he said, come and let us reason. Do you know why? Because when you're reasoning, you present your case. I present mine. There, there's no reason to fight. He said, when we finish the assessment and your sins are as red as scarlet, me, I'll give you parazo so that you watch it. But right now, they come, let us do the reasoning together. Okay? So we want to make sure we are not following a policy. We are not championing a cause just because it is populist. Plenty of people support it or that a few people support it. No. Appealing to the masses is a diversionary tactic. It's manipulative. It can make you say, crucify him, crucify him. Before you know you have killed the savior. Like we're going to kill him, I think next week, Friday, the man will go to the beach. She said, who do you want to ask the city? Kill the man on Friday and cry all the tears in the world. Monday, go to the beach and say, boom, cha, boom, boom, cha. Hey, yeah, yeah. <laughs> we will kill him again. Listen, my dear friends, have grounds, rational grounds for accepting or rejecting a claim, not because your emotions were tickled. No. You can have your emotions tickled, yes, but don't let that be. That make the decision for you. Otherwise, before you know, you have taken off your shirt at the torture stage. You are beating people. You have to be rational. Let reason mm -hmm. lead. And so that is what the whole unit is trying to do. So we point out to the fallacy that there is a target so that you don't fall prey to it. Neither commit same, like manipulating the language at the law court to make your case look fine. Meanwhile, you were being equivocal all this while. Someone has to point that out to you. Okay, so uh, Sekina, if your mic is better now, you can do the informal fallacies versus formal fallacies. I've talked about it already. I just want you to read over, then we move. Very quickly, then I will continue the other one. Informal fallacies. Formal fallacies. Formal fallacies. Patterns or stretches of arguments which make purely lo logical mistakes and are invalid. Informal fallacy. Errors and mistakes to do with the cont content of inductive argument. Defective arguments that often use rhetorical plots. Very good. That's fine. Thank you. Thank you very much. Defective arguments. So I I've explained this already. I don't want to go into it again. Where it is a formal fallacy, there is a rule of form. There is a deductive pattern that you should follow, and you have gone contrary to it. So we say you have deviated from the form. So your error is about the form. Informal fallacies are not appealing to any form. There isn't any deductive pattern. That's why it's not a matter of validity or invalidity here. It is a matter of whether you've given good enough grounds, even in that inductive reasoning, whether you've given good enough grounds for the claim you are making, okay? So we say you are either manipulating language or diverting our attention. There I showed you 
three ways of categorizing informal fallacies. Okay, fallacies of relevance. Is it relevant? The premises you are offering, the supposed premises, the reasons you are offering, do they really connect to the conclusion you are making? Or they are diversionary. Diversionary means you are drawing our, our attention to something else to convince us to go and support another claim. We will see them shortly. Okay. Or are they fallacies of weak induction? There, the evidence or the supposed premise is connected to the conclusion, but it's not enough. It's insufficient. So mostly it's weak. The grounds is not strong enough. Okay, so we call it out. And then we have those that you are playing on language to force us. To see it. We sometimes we see through it and we'll point it out. Let's see the particular fallacies now. Okay. Um, thank you, Sakina. Let me take Abel. We'll come back to the queue. So Abel, go ahead. Augustina, be on standby. Please read the first one for us. Sir. Can I please um reading the example? No, read the whole thing from the beginning, sir. Okay. Equivocation. The use of more than one connotation of a word in the same context without any signal of the six with the intent to manipulate or persuade a code that is called a No, Do you have your headpiece on, Abel? Can I please be there? Yeah, please go ahead. Are you wearing your earphone? Yes, please. If you take it off, it will be clearer. So take it off when you are reading the example. Okay, go ahead. Okay. Example one. Yes, that's perfect. The interviewer. Yeah. Okay. In this job, we need someone who is responsible. Applicant. Then I am the one you are looking for. In my last job, every time anything went wrong, they said, I was responsible. Very good. I don't want to belabor this point because we've seen it. We saw it when we, we did unit two connotations. Look at how far that was. Uh -huh. And then we saw it also in unit three when we considered ambiguity, vagueness, and equivocation. We saw it again. You see that I then now caution that we'll meet it again in unit 10. So if you were to see equivocation in your final exam, it is not equivocation referencing unit two or unit three. So you say, Doc, you said that no question will come from unit one, two, three, and five. But we saw some, well, you didn't. What you're seeing now is equivocation in argumentation. The same thing, nothing, it hasn't changed. It's just Banku this time sitting on the buffet table. The same Banku that man gave you at home. <laughs> now it is part of the buffet and they put tomatoes and you know vegetables <laughs> to decorate it. That's all. To garnish, that's how you say it, to garnish. As a, so don't say, why, why is that? You said, Banku, no, can Banku eba. Banku eba basa, ike tilapia. In my table, you know, it has come this time, and the unit said, why are you people laughing at me? <laughs> like I said, eja. Okay. So if you got that, then you understand it's a vocation. We don't have to labor it at all. Just polish it up and say, this one, I know I'm well, well. Then we move, okay? It is a fallacy that manipulates language. It's playing on the word responsible. The meaning of responsible, as the interviewer uses it, has shifted as the applicant is using it. How the applicant is using responsible is not the same as what the interviewer meant. And we have gone through that. So we'll move now to some examples. See, it's quite a, num a good number of examples. These slides are at your resource too, so you shouldn't struggle to uh, revise them. Look at example three. The, the noisy children are a real headache. I'm sure I would have mentioned it in previous ones. So look at example three. So please read example three as well, Abel. Then we move on to, I think the next one, circularity or so. Go ahead. Okay. And um, the example is not showing. Oh, it is showing. Say that I'm not seeing it. <laughs> okay. Yeah, I don't see example three. That's a different statement that it is not showing. It is not showing it's a question of reality. I am not seeing it as a question of knowledge. As I come now, can anyone see example three on the oh. screen? Yes, yes, yes. Yes, yes, madam. Yes. Very good. No. Boss, boss, hey, boss. So God is speaking. God is speaking. It's a reception. <laughs> it's a reception. Man's reception that cannot hear. 
Our God and I will help us, okay? All right, so let's let's see if... Uh, Augustina, can you see the read for us? Read for us. Unitan is quite lengthy, so... I don't, but I don't want to ask you. You, you can see it now. Okay, go ahead. I don't see it now. Abel can see it, so let him read and you do the next one, okay? Abel, go ahead. Go ahead. Thank you. I want to have myself a merry little Christmas, but I refuse to do as the song suggests and make The Yuletide, make, the Yuletide. Mm -hmm. The Yuletide day. I don't think sexual preference should have anything to do with enjoying the holiday. Let me see, thank you, sir. Let me see if anyone sees the equivocation there, because this could have been a question. I could have pulled this, or you know, we could pull it and put it down for you and tell you, assess the uh, passage below. Identify the fallacy, if any and show the source of that, whatever, something like that. What would you say? If you want to react, raise your hand. Mariam, do you want to react? Go ahead. The, uh, the word that's passing the equivocation here is gay. Good. What are the two meanings that have been confused there? Happiness and gay as an homosexual. Very good. I like the way you are succinct and concise, straight to the point. It's easy to follow. And that's a good skill. All right. So your colleague just told you that if you listen to the person speaking, you will say that, and you are being critical. I have to open your eyes very well. Otherwise, the person will look like he or she has argued well. It's just a manipulation of the language. A playing on the different connotations of one word, yet mixed up in a way that suggests to the listener that I haven't changed the meaning at all. I have been using the word gay throughout. But look at the way the meaning of gay has shifted from gay as in being happy and excited. It is a gay day, meaning it is a happy day. Then the person arguing says, I want to have myself a merry little Christmas, but I refuse to do as the song suggests. The song suggests that what? To make that Yuletide, that festivity, a gay one, a happy one. Give to people, forgive, hug each other, family reunion, what have you. It should be a happy. So that is the same thing with the sense. Say, have a, a jolly, gay, merry Christmas. You see that? That's the use of gay days. Make it a happy one. But the, the one speaking says, I will refuse to do what the song says. Look at the reason. Because I don't think sexual preference should have anything to do with enjoying the holiday. Now, it means the speaker, the person arguing supposedly, is thinking of the word gay as what? Sexual preference. And yet, it's mixing that meaning of the word gay, which is also another connotation of the word now. Eh? It's mixing that with what the song says. But the song's use of the word gay is meant to say, make it a happy one. That's a conflation, conflicting and oscillating from one of the meanings to the other without notice to the listener. You make it look as if you haven't shifted. That's what makes it a provocation, not just repeating uh, different meanings of the word. But when you do the repetition, and you make it suggest that you haven't shifted from one of the meanings to the other at all. It has always been the same meaning throughout. Then we call it equivocation. Very good. Begging the question is the next. Begging the question has a technical, if you like, a Latin. I've mentioned it from lecture one when I showed you various scenarios and how you are able to determine logical error and distinguish it from an empirical error. I showed you how someone is going in circles and how they are using the word morality. Being moral. Morality is being moral. When you say that you are just going around in circles, you yeah. are being tautologous, you are begging the question. You are, uh, what's the other one? I've been circular. We saw circularity also in definitions, or we're diagnosing definitions. I'm just connecting the knowledge now so that you see. Uh -huh. The Latin expression is what petitio principa. That's what you see on your screen. Nothing much. What is that? When you use the evidence 
to ground the claim. And then the claim to ground the evidence. So you go around in circle. Okay. I'm arguing, trying to give you the reason why you should support something. Then I use the reason to support the conclusion, the conclusion to support the reason. You see that we are going around in circle. Okay. You are repeating the ground. Look at example three. I want those that come out straightforward so that we don't have to spend too much time. It is by grace that we have internet. So let's have, thank you, uh, uh, Abel. Lois can do the next reading now. Okay, she will be on standby. Lois, please read example three for circularity. Now we have started the second particular fallacy. Go ahead. Example three. Example three. People who lack humility have no sense of beauty because everyone who has a sense of beauty also has humility. Thank you very much. When you hear because, you are expecting the reason why. So the earlier statement is what the person wants to say. And he's going to give you the reason supporting what he wants to say, the justification, the claim has been made. What is the evidence to support it? The claim is people who lack humility have no sense of beauty. You say because. So we are looking for the reason why you are saying what you say. You say because everyone, look at the language, everyone who has a sense of beauty also has humility. That is a repetition of what you say. You haven't shifted. Look, someone will say she is famous because she is well known. That's <laughs> that's a secularity. Uh, the the Kami Eugen, I heard that he was involved in an accident this morning. We pray God takes care of him for us. Kami Eugen is popular because he is well known. That is secular. I didn't say anything. Because what it means to be popular is to be well known. Uh -huh. So we say you are begging the question or you are going in circles. You are being tautologous or you can say petition. Principle. It manipulates language. So that is a, it's, it's, it has something to do with how language is being used. So the fallacies we saw, the grouping, the third one, that's where you will place uh, the, the first two with that. Now we can trot a bit. We can run a little bit. Okay. Appeal to force. Look at the, the Latin expressions. Argumentum ad baculum. Those who want to do some law or international relations or something, or just for, you know, to equip yourself, take note of them. Baculum from the word force, argument of force. And when I was giving you the introduction, laying the foundations, I gave you a, a good number of them. You don't give the person reasons. It is diversionary. You, you show them the power you have, or you threaten them, or you show them the consequences of not going by what you said. So that that is what is driving the person to accept your view. Not that the view is has merit, rational merit on its own, but you are actually threatening, either subtly, you know, uh, hidden, covertly, or directly. Look at a sister who says, if you don't marry me, I'll kill myself. <laughs> it doesn't say, me, who will buy cheap grass or other? Ah! You have to marry me, otherwise you can't work in my father's company. Ah! Is that <laughs> How? Is your father's company there? The, the sister is going to marry. So if you got that, that is already a signal. I gave you the one that happens in politics from the electorate to the, 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 the appointees or if you like the MPs and then vice versa. It goes both ways. So sometimes the electorate can hold you uh, to run something that you say any claim like that. See, they will make you do something because they will tell you if you don't do it, they will not vote for you. You stress the old man, then the old man says, if you won't vote, what? Because it's stressful, but maybe that thing is not the way. The persons want to force you to do it. Sometimes it's subtle, like I said. Sometimes it's direct. So let's see some few instances that you can do the reading for yourself. Appeal to threats is also called appeal to fear. Also called appeal to consequences, scare tactics. All these are various renditions of the same thing. Gobe, red, red, idria is the same. It's just different ways of rendering it. Let's look at some examples at play. I want us to do those that come out strongly. When you get to there, you can build on. Uh, let's do Johnny's own. 
journey. So example three and four, I want to take, I ask the Akushia to be on standby now. Akos, please read for us. Then Augustina can do the next one. Okay. Then I hold on for me a minute. Okay, Akusha, go ahead. Okay, example three. Johnny, of course, I deserve the use of your bicycle for the afternoon. After all, I'm sure you wouldn't want your mother to find out that you beat your little sister today. <laughs> I like that one. I'm sure. I'm sure to, uh, for the rest of the day, uh, you can take it, take it home and, and ride her. Because this one, if your mommy is like mommy Nancy, you are in trouble. <laughs> so you know, you know, say the threat is implicit. If you got that, then you see what we mean. He hasn't said that I will shoot you. I will beat you. No, he hasn't said it. It's, it's implicit. The consequences of you're not giving me the bag is the reason why you give me the bag. So talk. Very good. Uh, of course, you are still read the, example, the next example, then Tina will do the other one for us. Go ahead. Example four. Okay. Either you marry me right now, or I will be forced to leave you and never speak to you again. I'm sure hey, you wouldn't want to do that. Therefore, you marry me right now. Yeah, I did it as I'm crying. What a desperate sister. I'm come and cry me. Yeah. Ladies, never do that. Eh? <laughs> the story not this clear. Example. The story. <laughs> okay, so for this one, the brother is being told that look, if you don't, I mean, some will say, if you don't, I, I, I'm going to die, I'll commit suicide. Then die in Abraham and all the other people, they, they today have died. Some you don't have to be that cheap. It's threat, it's threat <laughs> that home. It's not built on love. You see that? So you can't give conditions like that. It is appealing to the consequences and it is not giving ground. Let's have rational thoughts about it. That look, I think we really have a lot in common that we can work towards. We all have academia, maybe here, yeah? or we are all church folks. We all love music and we will complement each other. If we were to share life together, say, just search within, maybe we can prayerfully wait. I'm also waiting, we are all in school. Let's give ourselves a year or so and let's see if what we share as friendship can become something meaningful and we turn up. What do you think? We are reasoning in love. We are not cajoling anybody into by force. That's it. Now, I'm my mom away. <laughs> Do you understand that? Those who speak understand what I'm saying. If I don't enter this thing with conviction based on rationality, is the heart that is loving, but the head is not dead. The head has to be active. Come, let us reason together. God, you say, come, let us cry together. Okay. Huh? If I'm inspired by rational ground with my heart in it yes but my heart led by my head that god gave me so thank you to the matters i will challenges but granted that we have these that we are grounded on as lovers we will have a life together and be able to weather the storms that come if it doesn't work you see that everybody can walk their uh, various pathways you know and still be friends because after all they but you, also, you are coming to cajole the person. It's threats. Don't tell someone that you have to be part of this campaign. This guy, he can win the thing. If he wins, I'm talking about threats still, eh? If he wins, the jobs mm, follow our campaign so that when we finish school, we'll get a job to do. That is appeal to threats. I don't like the policy. I'm not convinced. <laughs> they are not rational enough. They are not achievable, maybe. Okay? Allow people to reason. Don't use force. And I'm boss. Or one day, the people we are, I'm speaking to, I prophesy into your lives. Eh? Big bosses, running companies, you know, steering international affairs, what have you. We never succeed Amen. with force. Amen. We never succeed with force. Catch it, what for what? Oh, the force, yeah, it is you should If you use force, all that you see, you see, you see our fine gentleman, one man against the whole world. You can't cajole him. You don't use force. 
you engage. Okay. And God will create all of us to be mechanistic and obey him. See how much time I'm spending on appeal to threat? Because that one is often used. It's very manipulative. People fear. The devil put fear. God doesn't put fear. Look at the way people are, are sinning everywhere. He doesn't like sin, but he can let all of us die overnight. Why hasn't he done that? Or create all of us to obey him. In the morning we wake up holy by force. Is that how God operates? No. Because he wants you to make choices. So let people reason and choose. Whether at the company level, in marriage, or political party. So give options. Let people choose. Let them love you by choice. I'm not talking just a emotional love like the earlier one. But let the people want to be part of your thing. People want to buy following. Then, yeah. and they intentionally put some scary on truths on the internet for people to come. Oh, yeah. And they come and see. Yeah, plenty of people are for me. No. All right. I think we have we have stressed our prayers. <laughs> so we can move on. So far, we know equivocation, secularity. Then we saw appeal to force. We can now. So appeal to force is a fallacy of relevance. You know why we are drawing your attention is diversionary. So what I'm telling is irrelevant to what I want you to the conclusion I'm drawing. I am making your attention go to what the complaint. Look at Johnny on your screen. What I will tell your mother and how your mother will whip you to tell you that therefore give me the bicycle. What has your riding my bike got to do with? The report you are going to give, you are diverting my attention to the consequences of not giving me. So that is not relevant to the conclusion. Give me reasons that are connected to the conclusion you are going to see that. Uh -huh. That is what makes so all the appeal to this, appeal to that, appeal to this, there are six of them. They change the subject. That's why we say they are fallacies of relevance. They shift your attention from the focus. So we, we call it out. We tell you that. The, there is a fallacy, there's an error occurring as a result of what? The irrelevance of the evidence being given to the conclusion being drawn. Okay, all right. Now we move on to appeal to pity, another type of fallacy of relevance. You are drawing my attention from what you are saying to my emotions, pity, so that I will make a decision, either accept or reject what you are saying based on the pity. I am feeling. There's a funny one. I don't think that this was it was captured here, but uh, it's uh, those who want to do law, you go to the law school. I think that it's basic to your studies. A boy kills both of his parents, and then when he is being questioned, he tells the court, "Please have mercy on me. I'm an orphan." Some of my fine amnesty folks who come to my office and there, before you start, they say, Oh, please, I'm amnesty, you know. And in as much as we want to feel for our elderly folks who are back in school through the benevolence of our current VC and the, and the team up there. So they want them to come back to school to mop up quickly. It's, it's fine. We are trying to make sure that you get your degree after many years of being away. But it is not like a trump card you raise. For which reason we don't have to do anything academic with you. Just show it. No, it's not correct. That you. <laughs> we will make all, all arrangements to help you do well. Okay, But don't raise it like uh, uh, when you see it's an open system, uh, then people are passing. No. Now that gentleman at the law court has done that. You kill both of your parents. And you say, please, you know that I don't have any parents now. Have mercy on me when you are going to sentence. Who made you an orphan? That's a typical instance of what an appeal to pity emotions. Now let's see some fine ones that you can enjoy. So look at example one on your screen, and now Tina can read for me. Yes, Tina, thank you for your patience. Read now. Some be on standby. Augustina, Aku, Equia, sorry, Augustina Equia Ekuban. Okay, if Augustina is not 
ready immediately. Some you can read. Okay, see so now when you come there, you do the next one. Some read, carry that be on standby. Please stay by your gadget, eh? So that we don't drag it too much. Okay, example one. Please say, I deserve a better mark than an F for UGRC 150. Look, my parents just got a divorce. If they see that I got an F, they will just blame each other. The fighting will start all over again, and I will be very sad. Please thank you. All right. So I'm sure you can see. You can see what makes it appeal to pity. The person is invoking pity, not giving grounds. Oh, doc, I don't think I deserve an F. These things happen, though. My colleague who created these slides, these are real. He was a coordinator then years back. <laughs> so some of the examples I'm sure we are picking from either the newspapers or reading or particular things that happen. In our offices, we see these things a lot. And you don't understand why people will even think of thinking that we have no problem. Even Listen. You can use your unfortunate situations as a strength. Don't come and say, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I'm going for an interview, then they ask, and if you are playing my recordings, you know these examples, I give them all the time. You are going for an interview. They ask you, why do you think you qualify for this job? You see? Wow. Wow. The sister is in the queue. And she said, hey, to be in the interview. Why do you think you qualify for this job? Then she says, hmm, I have suffered. I have really suffered in my life. Hey! Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you have suffered, so we should give you our job. Just a lot. I said, we want to be that. <laughs> You're suffering. Yes, yes, yes. The, the, the panelists, they are not welfare committee. You. At a church, it's, no, 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 no. It is a company. They want a worker. The way you are saying you suffer, Libya, then our our confex will suffer your health if we make it a contact. It is not a strength at all. People think it's a strength. Tell us that. You see, know, the sense of in the queue, all of us who came for this thing, I'm the only lady. There are about 20 of us, I'm the only lady. And I was coming because I didn't eat at work, sir. I would say, this job there. Ah! Is that the reason why you qualify for this job? Yeah, yeah. And you are a good No. <laughs> it can't be that. You see, if I'm on the panel, you won't get it. Oh, close. And God has blessed me with something in my pocket. I'll give you some. But you can't do that job. Because it's dangerous for us. People don't understand that. It's even dangerous for you. The orientation is wrong. I think I qualify for this job of a marketer. And my reasons are, I have had a wealth of experience because of my background. I don't come from too wealthy a home, but I've learned to use the unfortunate situations of life to ginger on and to make them wet while I've sold sugar cane. I have, even this morning, I had to walk all the way here, but I did it enthusiastically because I knew I know that the wet I have will come to play and I will get the job and the situation will change. I'm a go-getter and I'm confident that if you give me the opportunity, I am going to beat all the gentlemen in the queue that I'm the only lady amongst. Try me. You think you, this one, I think we are marking <laughs> what I have said. You think that the panelists won't be challenged because you are, you are presenting facts. It's a factual matter that you walked to the place, yes? that you are the only lady in the queue, yes? You are presenting them as argument, as grounds, as reasons. Not that I have suffered. You, I really have to get this job. My mother cried sick. I was, when I was coming, I don't even know if by the time I get home, she'll be alive. This is the only last hope I have. Hey, sister, <laughs> you won't get it. It's appeal to pity, emotions, argumentum ad misericordia, from the word misery, look at it. Don't do it. Okay, where is the misery good? There it is. Okay, sympathy, a humor committee, a begging attitude. We all have issues. It's how you present, present them as strengths and show that you are on top of it. That is what sells. They will give you the product because you have experience. You know how to deal with people. You know how to, even if the company is going through crisis, you can present it in a way that exudes strength. 
Not the one that will say, right now, we haven't been paid. All our workers haven't been paid. We don't know, hey, which company, which bank should come and invest into your situation like this? You can't present it. How can you do PR for the company? Oh, uh -huh. So appeal to threats. We've seen it. Appeal to pity. Don't do it. They are all diversionary. They invoke pity. The listener. Very good. Augustina, if you are here, we can do the next one. So you see that I'm, I'm moving a bit faster now, but we are not rushing. Argumentum ad populum. This is from the word people, popular, mm? bandwagon, grandstand, grand, grand, big. We go to the stadium, the grandstand, where plenty of people are. These are all various ways of describing this particular diversionary fallacy of relevance as well. It's called appeal to the people. What does it say? So let's read some. Examples or over. Sister, read the fallacy itself. The one in blue. Go ahead. The acceptance of the claim. Remove your, remove your headpiece. If you are wearing ear, uh, pencil, I didn't know it's so now take it off here eh, so that it will come clear. If it's on, it, it makes it uh, easy. Okay. The acceptance of a claim is the claim. You go ahead. Maybe it is your sound, so it's okay. Go ahead. The acceptance of a claim or party solely on the basis of its acceptance by a large number of people. By a large it number of people. Yeah. Just I finish it. Then. Sorry, okay. Mm. The justification of Sorry, the justification or defense was an action on the front that everybody or most people do. It's or no it. No it. Okay, thank you very much. I'll read over for the benefit of those who play back. I, I may have special students who want to hear clearly, okay, in addition to what their units will do for them. The acceptance of a claim or practice solely on the basis of its acceptance by a large number of people. That is our problem. We don't worry if many people love something, but if the whole reason soul, solely, you make that acceptance yourself or you reject it, just because many people, I can't accept the one, accept it, or many people reject it. We have a problem with you because many people are not always right. Sometimes what many people are following is many people follow things that are not what I keep saying, if you like put some, excuse my language, some rubbish stuff on social media right now and couches in a way that either uh, spreads fear or uh, is mar uh, marrying someone who can then is getting someone dirty, you know, destroying someone's reputation. A popular figure for that matter. Within minutes, go and see the views. You'll be shocked. So, and then many people voted for a certain political party. But after four years, if it's Ghana, after four, you see that what the many people said may be changed, like we had comfortable lead shifted to I do I do do the do, you know. In 2020, we all saw the, the pressure in the system. 2020, 2020. <laughs> <laughs> it was so close. What many people say, therefore, may not be <laughs> right or wrong in itself. That's why you are a critical thinker. Don't be manipulated. Listen, yes, and hear people out. But don't let what the plenty of people are saying, nah, ke kenti. just that, solely. Mm? Then you, you join, you jump into the bandwagon. People run. They see people running, then they all join, they are all running. Hey, 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 they all then. As they are going, the one asks them, why, why are you going to say, I don't know, I saw them running, that's why I'm also running. Ah! <laughs> Everybody's going, they are going, oh, uh, please, Madam Hairdresser, remember my examples in lecture one. I told you when we are finishing, I'll come back to all of them. Please put the pony on my forehead. That's the stylist being told that by the bride. It is the bride's day, so she wants to do what the bride wants. No problem. You want a pony on your forehead? Say yes. So stylist says why? So <laughs> oh, that's what ladies are doing. The ladies are doing now. Many ladies are. And that is what ah yeah yeah. 
I grew up. Oh, okay. Why? <laughs> Have you checked the size of your forehead? Hey, God, the clay, you put extra, extra clay at different places. So some people have it at their hips. And it is, it is <laughs> it's fine for Africa. If you have plenty at side and side and backward and even front, front and back. You know front and back? I'm still praying this morning, so I can't talk. I can't give you details. It's fine. For other places, the extra like that is like sickness for them. That's up to them. Yeah, if you do, you have to be well endowed so that you can do the African clothing well. No problem. But others, their extra things are not at the hips. Some days is at the forehead. Or mama. Because we are here. You say we should put the pony on top of your extra extended forehead that God gave you beautifully. That should do pony backwards so that the elongated forehead plus the backward styling will balance nicely. You are going to do what <laughs> you are going to do what others are doing when they have maybe they don't have enough here. Listen, I'm trying to use practical relatively funny example but to make very strong argument that will help you don't be swayed by what plenty people said listen because the fact that plenty people are following something is a it's a sign that there must be something there but what it is is what you as a critical mind should be interested is it that the thing is durable remember those examples yeah is it long like was another expression something about quality People, a lot of people are buying this product, or a lot of people are listening to this station, or a lot of people are going to view this lady's YouTube recordings. What is it? So, so go and check, and then use your rational uh, uh, abilities to interrogate it. Oh, it's because the thing is durable. The thing is very, very educative. The thing is a useful resource. Don't say plenty of people are following it. Cannot do it. It is appeal to the masses, argumentum at popular. I know you won't forget that. So what are we done so far? Let's move up from the beginning. We did equivocation, we did circularity, they manipulate language. Then we did threats, we did uh, uh, pity, where we appeal to these, eh? and we just did appealing to the people, appealing to the masses, or the door. Okay. Plenty of people who said crucify him, because I said it already in the introduction. Plenty people. So it looked like they are right. They killed the, the savior. Yeah. So the fact that plenty of people said something in there is it, it is so diversional. You look out for what it is that makes plenty of people follow that thing and point that. And I say that I think that the ELV is attracting a lot of dissenting views about the percentage that is being charged. You see what I said? and the way we want to even uh, charge it. So we may have to have a relook at it. We are diagnosing, yes, it is a fair analysis. What is wrong is to say that, look at how many people are against it. Well, so that doesn't add it, show us what it is that they are against and focus on that. Or the other way around is, look at how many people are for free SHS. They a lot of people love it. I mean, some more piazan. They low and probably a lot of people like it. No problem. Don't make that the focus of your analysis. Say that. Look at how many students we have in school now. You see, who couldn't have been. That is that is a good, a fair comment to make. You're not just looking at the numbers. You're looking at the quality of what the argumentation you are arguing so we wouldn't have had this number of students in school you see it's still quantity but you are not saying many people love it and you should accept it many people can love excuse me excuse me bola in the same way many people can reject goodies so the many people in itself doesn't justify the things Yes, otherwise. Now let's read. So since I'm going to read one more and then I'll call uh, Farida. Okay, Sina, I think let's ask Farida, okay? Because your background wasn't too loud for me. I hope you don't get offended, okay? So let's take Farida. Farida, please read example one. 
Whilst Farida is reading, Benedicta be on standby, then Safo after Benedicta. Example one, you should read Manasi Azure's latest novel right away. It is sold over a million copies. It is sold over a million copies. And practically everyone in the media is talking about it. That's all. It's so, appealing to everyone. Obia, can Obia say it? Obia say it. It's a No. Obia say it means those who don't speak here. Obia say everybody says it's good. Really? Okay. So, it is good. Just because everybody says so, we've done that. My lady, read the second one too, then I'm done with appeal to the people. And I know that we didn't rush. Right? Okay. Right. Jane, I can't believe you don't have a smartphone yet. Why? Practically everyone today has one. Surely you buy one right away. Mm -hmm. There we go. Me too. I have Tokolo Maja. Roller. I don't have a smartphone. <laughs> but they say because everybody has it, I must have one. Is that the reason? Say that, oh, I think that because of this, our online. <laughs> okay. Oh, I think that because of these are online sessions and even the convenience of having a smartphone, maybe we should consider doing some susu towards that place because it will help us as study. You can use it to search for, uh, you know, a place just in case you say you're writing your IE at so and so place or so and so. Place. Just Google it, you'll find it. You can use it to call an Uber, you know, you can use it to record lectures, stuff like it has games, you can have a radio, you know, it has the Google map. So maybe that is the reason why I think that let's let's try and see if we can all together get. You are giving me, oh, mommy, reason, some usefulness, a grant. You know that everybody has some. Hey, Andrea, <laughs> everybody has a media. If you there, you put pressure on yourself. So ladies, I like to advise my lady friends that God has brought my path. The little I know, add. If you hear someone, did they add to what I thought I knew? Eh? Don't go and do your wedding as defined by somebody. If you yourself, Tete Ghana cities, eh? 300 Ghana a month, now Jenica Kranka, you started like the brother to 466 Ghana cities, 10 pesos. You say you're going to do wedding, three buffets, you change your gown 17 times, you run to a reception at Dubai, then the next one as well. So, and here, now we will be to pay. Whose daughter or son is going to pay that? Long list, and when we ask, <laughs> not like you, you've won a lottery somewhere. Oh, to the water. Oh, we like goodies, we like nice things, but if it is not there and you still have vision, think this is life, think a critical thinker. Charlie, go and do this. You'll be the new talking time before long. Everybody is going to do a beach wedding. You say, no high heels. Mm. Sure. You do coconut reception. No chairs and table. Then you use this uh, nice flower, uh, something. You, you do it, and that's your crown. People are wearing white. <laughs> I'm, just, I'm just trying to make it simplistic. Eh? Do things and don't say when we actually don't say, Oh, but I want to do it this way because you know, I'm a Legon girl, Legon girls. This is how we do it, Legon girls. Look at how you suffered to pay your first semester, even admission fee. Look at how much work you had to do part time to get your admission. Say, Legon girls are all Legon girls, you and are you all of them, sisters? Okay, so that was just to buttress our appeal to the masses. <laughs> Thank you. you will do very fine. Finish it. If after two, three years you have established, and then now you have started your bakery, be, you sell your bread, small, small bit, in addition to whatever you have that uh, government pays you because you did uh, accounting or something. Now, now you say you want to do a renewal of vows or whatever you want to call celebration of our marriage, three years. Old. And then now you have the way with that. You want to do buffet a thousand times. Invite me. I'll come with extra bags, like people do at our craft food house. Ball over. Bags, it's a table that's it. I will chop and pack bank until I pay your love this. It won't even hurt you. There are parties when you go, as you are entering, the eyes watching, you can't even swallow the food. 
because the strict budget who share you one I show I mean I just today don't open like that there's so much to eat so it is up to you nobody has forced you but this thing where everybody is doing is same I've spent a lot of time on this and I feel to threat because this it is a practical matter for us all I think that we know appeal to the masses or appeal to people now we can go to ad hominem you see that this one we're using the Latin especially argumentum ad hominem as a popular name from homo homo sapien man eh? so the argument that attacks the person fallacy of the person argumentum ad hominem the, the common name for it is attacking the person you leave the issue and you discuss the person it is also diversionary it is a diversionary means it is changing the subject of focus the, the reason why we are discussing it changes it shifts attention from the subject matter to something else okay and so we say it is a fallacy of relevance it the the error is as a result of what irrelevance of the premise to the conclusion being drawn how many have we seen so far appeal to threat appeal to the masses uh, uh, appeal to pity and then we just saw whatever we are adding this argumentum ad hominem the attacking the person i just simplified it by telling when you leave the issue you stop talking about the issue and discuss the person like the, the example i always give he said oh don't mind uh, that man cannot be president of ghana it was in reference to our current president since here i heard it on the news i was so shocked and it's not about being politically inclined towards a or b it is just the 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 critical you know ability of the so called intellectual then who was speaking that i was amazed that would you want to say say he cannot be president ah, they say why about this short man see jimisa jimisa <laughs> you know because of the height of the person why is presidency military or something look at the logic the reasoning the supposed evidence someone is prof lois baba <laughs> that someone cannot be president you say why you say he's too short ah why being short the same way sometimes you accept or reject oh please i think that we should listen to what a uh, baba lois is saying or baba lois say oh because you know that lady is really look at her. we are talking about the fan at the lecture hall maybe one pet baba says oh i think we should switch uh, we should switch off the fan and rather open the windows because of the possibilities of covid and its spread what have you we have it crowded here so that we can get ventilation the air will move around that's it so let's switch off the fan rather open the windows or something then who, who can i uh, let me look for ijaya the ijaya says no 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 i, I don't think what Baba uh, Lois is saying, we should listen to. Okay, so so Ejaya disagrees with Lois. We want to know Ejaya why? What's your reason? So that Baba no Lois no. She thinks that because she went to Gehi, and go her father is the president, and because everything she wants us to hear her voice. Who who do who open the window? Why? You see you see the problem, my my people. <laughs> <laughs> this is the problem we are discussing should we switch off the fan or switch it on with reasons reasons agustina yeah catch on why tell them no reasons then you stop talking about the reasons and you're talking about the person the school she went to her father and the way she is this when you do that we say you're diverting attention from a subject matter is a change of subject you see that so what you are saying is irrelevant to the conclusion that's why it also belongs to the fallacy of what relevance you are diverting attention you are attacking the person and it doesn't mean you have taken a knife and you are chasing or you are taking a chocolate you know chocolate <laughs> a club a big stick to follow her we haven't said that it is in the language he cannot be president why he say because he's too short why are you attacking the person should we go and stretch him a little what is the crime in being short she where is it written in our constitution and short is always relative to someone check the the person you are calling to short against 
some other person in the movies that we watch and see if the person is not trans. So it's just totally, uh, excuse my extreme, eh? useless a way to reason. And you'll be amazed. People will, be, people will buy into that. <laughs> and just, that is the problem. So, so if you got that, I use that to show you ad hominem this logistic. See, I've added something. Look on my screen. So the ad hominem comes in two versions. Ad hominem just means attacking the person. Look at look at your screen now. The this, this negative, okay? This logistic is saying, don't accept. So it brings detracting and negative things about the person so that it will prevent you from accepting the view. When we are discussing a viewpoint, you leave the discussion and you, you make the focus the person. But this time, the discussion, uh, uh, what you are bringing is a negative term, is detracting, negative. So you don't accept what he's saying because of the being negative, 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 negative. So we say it's this logistic ad hominem, see that. But then you can also have an, an ad hominem, which is eulogistic. It is still an attack. To eulogize means to praise, okay? You are praising. When we say are eulogizing someone, normally the dead. Or, now, you say you have left the issue. So suppose you said, let's turn our uh, uh, focus back onto Lois and Ejaya's discussion about the farm. Suppose Ejaya said, oh, I think we should agree with what Lois said. Lois says, well, let's open the windows rather because we want ventilation. So some say no. Then I say, you know, I think we should agree with Lois. So we all tend to Ejaya because he's, he's a fine gentleman. We are interested in his viewpoint about the discussion. He should convince us as to why we should accept Lois. Lois's view. You see that? And he says, oh, I think that we should listen to what Lois is saying. You know, Lois herself, she's like an angel in this class. When you are hungry and she has one, she'll share with you. <laughs> Every time we are done, we are late. She has a car. So you see that she will pack her car there and ask all of us to get Lois. Oh, those on the road, she will give you let. But sometimes when we reach the lecture hall, before the lecture will come, she has markets in her bag. She will even give, hey, Eja Yao. <laughs> in as much as this is a good thing she is saying about Lois, it is at home meaning. What makes it at home meaning? You have left the issue. You are talking fun. Opening or closing window. That's what we are talking. That's the issue. It's diversionary. You are talking about the person. Except that you are eulogizing, appraising. Okay, so we still call it out. That's why you should know ad hominem this logistic and your logistic. I think your the instructor gave us two, and so we we'll use them. Let's read now to buttress it. They add it to what you know of the 12 fallacies. You see that we are still on track. We are looking at all the 12 fallacies, but I want it to be a conversational kind of discussion of it so that you don't have to do too much read over to be able to use them. You won't have too much time. Look at today's date. Okay, so you don't have to go and read the whole textbook and get busy, you can get impressed so okay, I'm doing something. No, 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 no. Otherwise, it will be too plenty for you. So the interactions are meant to settle it down. So that you just do a quick mop up. And you are done. Clarita, I think it's your turn now to read the last one. Then we'll go to Bene. Please read, Clarita. <clears throat> Example six. Christine has argued persuasively that parliament should support stem cell research involving fetal tissue. But Christian has no morals at all. She has sex with any man who walks on the door, and she has and then she has had three abortions. No one with full moral should listen to her. Wow, what's that? Wow, what's that? You see, this thing. <laughs> hey, some of us think we are the heavy litigator. Oh. And even the door will not open for God to come and sit and judge him. But the other person gets to the gate, you, you can't even come for the trial. Go straight to hell. You know, let the person's view speak. Don't we sit to discuss morality. We can talk morality. Here, it is a legislature matter. Is the case a valid one or not? Is she, the person making a presentation that is grounded in reasons, 
Don't say because the person speaking is a so and so and so, therefore he or she cannot reason. Look at the argument for its merit. That's the whole point we are making. It. So that is this logistic. You are using things about the person to negate what she's saying. Is what she's saying true or false? So because God forbid, the person is a prostitute. She cannot tell you that the gentleman living next door. Look, he entered the room with knives yesterday. I saw it. So it is possible that he can be a suspect for that matter. That's the fact she's giving you. Oh, this girl now, nah, Lily and Rana Price, she went to do so and so and so. What has it got to do with the issue? You see, it's this logistic. Okay. I read, I do the last one. The better be on standby. We we'll move to the next one. The finance minister, Mr. Ken Oporiata, is the most honest and eloquent person to hold black office. Therefore, Therefore his argument for increasing taxes cannot possibly be flawed. One who should name this one like this, he or she wants appointment. <laughs> Look at our problem with this argument. <laughs> and these are old slides. Too. My colleague prepared this. I know that this was there even before 20, I think it was 2019 or so. So no one should think that it was prepared even recent. But the substance of it, you see that is still relevant to you. You say the man is the most honest and eloquent person such that he couldn't, hello, look at that, look at why it is a eulogizing. Look at the conclusion you want to make so that it is not possible that he can be flawed, he can make an error in the argument he is making for increasing taxes. What happened to the elect? Why was it changed? Why was it revised? Didn't we take a whole document or so to parliament? Why did they have a region represented or captured? It was drawn back and corrected because a human institution. Uh -huh. So if someone argues the way this person was arguing, it's ad hominem eulogistic. You have left the issue about what? An argument for increasing taxes, whether it can be flawed or not. We are saying, oh, maybe there's a flaw here, there's an error here. So, no, 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 no. The, the minister need here is honest too, and he's very eloquent too. He can't, be, he can't have an error. That's very diversionary. Have, has anybody said he's not honest? Has anybody said he's not eloquent? He can have both and still err. So when we are talking about an error, a possible error, we have to keep our attention on checking whether there is an error or there is not an error in the argument that has been made for increasing tax or otherwise. See, that is the focus. Don't go and make it about his person, he being an honest person or an eloquent person. Because eloquence and honesty are not a, a matter of uh, uh, you know, checking for an error or otherwise in the increasing of taxation. It's a eulogistic fallacy ad hominem. Okay, good job. You see, there were 12 of them, 12 fallacies. We have done half already and still going. And I'm sure if I asked you to mention any of them, any two fallacies that manipulate language, you can do that and even explain. I ask you the diversionary ones, appeal to this, appeal to that, appeal to this, you should be able to do that. Now we can take Bene, then I'll drink some water. Benedicta, please read. Appeal to unqualified authority. Sometimes you read appeal to an authority as illegitimate appeal to authority. Okay. You are appealing to an authority, but that authority is not a legitimate one. So you may be appealing to a boss in critical thinking to ground something in, let's say, mathematics. So I may be an expert in math, but my expertise will not cover TSR because I don't know the skill that you look out for if people are active to tell whether they are doing the right thing on the stage or otherwise. So just because I'm professor so-and-so or a priest so-and-so, or what all the kinds of expertise you can think of doesn't mean you can appeal to me to support something else in another discipline. That is an appeal that is not what legitimate. Why? Because the authority in question, you see that the person is also an authority, an expert, but the authority in question is an unqualified one. The unqualified may be that the person hasn't gone to driving school at all, or he hasn't gone to medical school. He's just a quack doctor. That's one way of it being unqualified. Or he is qualified in some other discipline, but not the one 
that you have gone to him or her for or appealing to to ground the claim. Okay. Just that read for me. Hey, it's yeah, Benedicta, please read for me. From the blue. Appeal from the blue. The fallacy. Appeal to unqualified authority. The fallacy occurs when we make an unjustified or illegitimate appeal to an alleged authority, but such an appeal is unjustified either because his or her area of competence lies outside the field in which the matter falls or he or she is not adequately informed. The fallacy of appealing to the testimony of an authority outside his or her special field. I think you did very well too with how you read this. Very smooth, touching on the right places for me. So thank you. Everybody who has read so far has done well, okay? Now, everyone watch. I'm saying that the person you are appealing to or the entity you are appealing to may be an authority too, okay? Just that it's not an authority qualified to speak to the matter in question. That's one way of committing this fallacy. Then the other one is, the person is not an authority in anything. It's just a quack one. That is also, if you appeal to that person, it will also be an appeal to unqualified authority. So let's look at examples one and two. My lady, read this to as well. Then we move on. Good job, Benedicta. Saf will be on standby. And I did read for me. Go, go. You are muted. Yes, please. Yes. Example one. Our pastor, our, our pastor says that prayer in public schools is not unconstitutional. Therefore, we must conclude that such prayer is perfectly legal. Please read the second one. Now comment. Now move. Example two. Professor Ebenezer Odru. The highly respected vice chancellor of the University of Ghana and professor and professor of entomology has recommended chloroquine for the treatment of coronavirus. And Professor Odro is also a learned scholar and researcher. Therefore, chloroquine should be used to treat the coronavirus. <laughs> <laughs> the word is learned. Eh? Now, who is an entomologist? Is a scientist who studies insects. Uh, there's a fine uh, professor in, in that uh, way that calls himself the insect man. It's a professor, he knows insects. Professor Ebenezer Odru was a former vice chancellor before the current vice chancellor, our lady vice chancellor. He was doing very well, yeah, proud of him. Listen, before her was professor. David is on road. He's a full professor of the University of Ghana proper. So he is an expert, an authority. Pa. So hey. now, if you appeal to his professorship in Kwakwa, look at the authority he wields. He sits on boards just by being uh, the, the lead educationist, if you like, in the institution, who place him in the many places of authority. No two ways about it. But if you go and appeal to him and what he said, to ground the claim that, look at the conclusion, chloroquine should be used to treat the coronavirus. And they are, what one pound? That one there, it is dangerous over the bar. <laughs> it didn't, it didn't hit the target. <laughs> there is an authority, but not qualified. See what we are saying now? For the team in question, we are discussing health, medic, medicine. I suspect it's something to do with chemistry, mixture of medicines, pharmacy. The man is a professional in insects, a discipline on its own. If you even wanted to appeal to his authority as the lead of the University of Ghana, it has nothing to do directly with commenting and prescribing what medication would treat coronavirus. That is an unqualified authority. So it's just like saying Lewin of Ghana said GDP will reduce if we do the, uh, the fundamentals and do this. Therefore, we should listen to him. Ghana Lewin, a fine entertainer, he would dance and he would, just by bulging out his eyes, all your stress will reduce, at least for the afternoon. 
That is expertise, not economics and fundamentals <laughs> and inflation, whatever. But if you if you appeal to the fact that he is an expert in that field to ground another, you, it is an unqualified authority. That is what advertisers do. Yes, look at the Mercedes. Oh, I don't want to pick any car because I'm not good there. But look at the adverts. They they take this fine celebrity and put his face there. The celebrity's face may even be bigger, big on the billboard. Then next to it, small will be the product, ice cream or something. Look at our fine uh, empress. She's selling everything because high says you need back when you're soft and this. And that and that because if you love the celebrity, you may not query the product. See that? So even this person who uses it as a, I think we finish before. Maybe very yes, soon. Maybe you I think maybe. So a critical mind you look out for that is the person, the quality. Now look at the pastor one, <laughs> so that we'll be at peace with ourselves. We are church people, or, or when I say church, I mean religious folks. Yeah. So we 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 revere and honor the man of God. But when it comes to legality, you cannot appeal to the expertise or if like the authority that the man of God wears to ground something that has to do with legality, unless he's wearing his professional gown as a lawyer. My past, one of my pastors is a lawyer. It is Chambers, a renowned one, dealing with big, big cases. Right, we have a lot in my fine church. Mm. So if he's wearing his legal regalia, and commenting like I'm doing now, I have my expertise as a philosopher, as a critical thinking, whatever, or whichever label you want to give me. So I can wear that. When I enter church, I can wear the other ones that I wear there. If I'm using that gown as a lawyer to talk, that's different. But this one, the speaker is appealing to the pastor in him. Okay? The authority you are appealing to is the father is a, a luminary for your divine matters. That's what pastoring is. It's church, faith, religion. Now you see, he said something about the law. So you would think that we should accept what he has said and for that ground, take it that prayer is perfectly legal in the church. That's a constitutional matter. I think that this is relevant for uh, our folks in America. Ghana, we pray, we could get our poor libation before we start school. Everything we are doing prayer. Sorry, pa. Eh? That is what has kept us. Coffee didn't kill us. We will not copy blindly. Anyway, so <laughs> that was Benedict's read. It was a fine read. So we now move to Safo. The while Safo reads, Lucy will be on standby. Safo, please, you're going to do hasty generalization for us. Okay, go ahead. Well, the slide is not uh, showing. Yeah. Are you sure that is what you wanted to say? Oops. I wanted to no, say no, you can't no. see it. No. <laughs> Please not ask me. It was there all this while. So you wanted to say you can't see it. I want my students to see the difference, okay? One is I cannot see it. It's not the same as it is not there. All right, go ahead, sir. A hasty generalization is an inductive argument in which one makes a fallacious inference from a relatively small number of cases to a generalization about a class of instances. When few members of a group of people or items are observed and their qualities are extended to the entire membership of the group. Very good. I don't think this one needs further elaboration. Look at the name very well. You are in a hurry, you are in a haste open temp, yeah, but in a haste, in a hurry to generalize. You are in a hurry to say something about the whole set. When all you have evidence for is a few. See? So hasty generalization, if you look at the categorizations of fallacies we saw earlier, the groupings, I mentioned viruses, bacteria, and uh, I, I grouped them that way to help you see. You will see that this one, is likely going to be one of the fallacies of what? Weak induction. You have just a, a small evidence, so look, from few instances, you want to speak about the whole. So yes, what you are saying may be true of the subset, the sample, but it cannot ground the whole. That is what we are calling out, it's not enough. 
So it's not directional. It's not like the qualities of relevance. This one is not like that. This one, what you are saying is relevant to the set. The set that is not enough. So, uh -huh. so our friend just read that. And Sapu will do the two reads and then we'll move. It's not difficult. So I don't want to spend too much time. I want to show you the brother of hasty generalization. That one is a bit tough. So I'll show you. Go ahead, sir. Example one. Yesterday, two students were diagnosed as contracting the coronavirus. Today, two more were given the same diagnosis. It is obvious we have an epidemic. Everyone on campus has coronavirus. Hey, this one, the person was speaking two. in Ghana. Hey, what was that? <laughs> hey, this, this morning, I, uh, they, they found some coronavirus patients at they, they, they say, hey, and they said, you too. Hey, you see how they go on here? All of them. <laughs> they are corona. <laughs> That's hasty generalization. You are in a hurry to generalize about the whole based on a few instances. So it is insufficient evidence. That's why your friend told you, Safu told you that it is also called what, jumping to a conclusion. He didn't say that until you look at it there. You are jumping to a conclusion because you have one to who. Yeah, yeah, and I remember when we we're doing narrative induction. If the evidence is not sufficient, you commit the fallacy of what generalizing in a haste. There are so many examples there. Now, the fallacy right after hasty generalization, that's what I projected, is called misplaced vividness. Don't let the name surprise you. Even your surname and my surname, people are managing very scary surnames. Eh? So, that way we are managing to pronounce it. Don't let it scare you at all. <laughs> it's called misplaced vividness. You are being vivid. You are being emphatic. But the emphasis is misplaced. You have shifted the emphasis to the wrong place. Where you should put the emphasis is not where you are putting it. So we say the emphasis is what? Misplaced. The vividness is misplaced. Now, why? Am I connecting it to hasty generalization? Because mis misplaced vividness is relatively technical. So listen, okay, to be so simple for you. It is like you are doing hasty generalization. So it's as if we are calling out the insufficiency of the evidence, okay? However, it is not just the fact that the evidence is not sufficient. It looks like there's a certain emotional grounds for which you are blowing that insufficient evidence out of proportion. I said there was something not too pleasant or overly ple uh, pleasant about the, the few instances you had. And so based on that, you overly generalize about the whole, okay? So it is hasty generalization with emotional impact of a kind. The, hasty generalization you are making is as a result of what? A certain eventful occurrence around those few instances, okay? And so it makes you shift your attention. That's why we say it, it is what a misplaced vividness to that emotional- uh, well, uh, Please, I can't hear you. Please, 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 let me finish it. Check your turn. It's the same microphone I'm using. Listen, okay? When I finish and I share the recording, you can you check your gadget. Okay, I'm shouting. Why? Listen, everyone, please watch. Misplaced vividness because there is an emotional connection. The emotion may be positive or negative. Oftentimes, a negative one that will make you now want to generalize about the whole set. That is why it is not just a hasty generalization, but it goes beyond that to be what? A misplaced vividness. My lady, is it better? Can you hear better now? Check your gadgets volume two as well, okay? Can you hear now? My Antea, can you hear me? The, the lady who said she cannot hear, can you hear? Oh, can anyone hear me? Yes, yes, yes. yes. Okay. yes. okay, and it means when we record it, she will hear. Okay, so let's continue. So that the thing doesn't become too long. We should cover everything. Then next week will be revision for us. Okay, right. So we go on. 
So look at the expression there. I will take um, Lady Lucy Moore to read for me now. Lucy, please read for us. Whilst you read, Nalif, what can be on standby? Okay, madam. So this plays vividness. When an emotional impact causes a person to jump to a conclusion or hastily generalize <laughs> from their experience, a small number of dramatic and vivid events are taken to outweigh a, a significant amount of statistical evidence. It deflects attention by focusing too much on a particularly vivid and provocative case. Well done. Well read. So that's what I explained. You will see the insufficiency of the evidence there. But the emphasis is on the fact that the person is blowing the thing out of proportion to draw a conclusion about the whole set because of a certain emphasis he or she is laying on an emotional impact he or she had. So, so the thing is a, 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 an overly blown out of proportion generalization as a result of a certain impact that the few instances had on the person. That is what makes it displays vividness. That's why they look alike. Now, since I read the two examples, hey, there is one example, is a conversation. Go ahead. And I am giving up extreme. I am giving up extreme sports now that I have children. I ha I think I will take up golf. And this is from Bill. I wouldn't do that. Do you remember Charles? He was playing golf when he got hit by a golf cart. I broke his leg and he fell over, it, it giving him golf his a concussion. Mm. It, it broke his leg. It was the golf that broke, broke his leg. Go ahead. Okay. Thank you. It broke his yeah. leg and he fell over, giving himself a concussion. He was in hospital for a week and still walks with a limb. I would stick to paragliding. <laughs> you see the person's argument. Someone says, Oh, right now that I've, I've started giving birth to children, means I've put on a bit. I think I would rather do say, just some golfing instead of a very strenuous sporting activity. Then the other person says, Hey, you're going to do golf. And I'm sure this one is from my hometown. <laughs> hey, a cup of golf. The golf is open, you pull. Well, Miss Midway, where well, I can go off. Go off and go your boy. You know? Oh, come on, golf. Eh, the video, hello, the bully. Are you going to play golf? Look at the story of Bill. <laughs> now, Bill comes to tell an emotional story. There is evidence here. It's so insufficient. What is the story about Charles, who got hit by the golf cart, unfortunately? Broke his leg. That's Charles one. Look at how many people play golf in a day, in a year, at that pill. But Charles's situation, which is an accident and caused a problem for him, is what Bill is referring to. And then look at Bill's conclusion. I will I would rather stick to paragliding because golf dear daddy. That is a problem. It's insufficient evidence. Mixed up with what? Extreme emotional impact, positive or negative. That makes the person overly generalized. And that's why we say the emphasis is misplaced. You are emphasizing something to draw the conclusion, but that emphasis is a misplaced one, insufficient and misplaced. That's the, the fallacy we call misplaced. There are so many other examples. You can see this one, I like to read it, but I think I want to save time. So I can mop up the other two. So you go enjoy this one from RLG laptop and how the person thinks you are going to get RLG. Hey, RLG, we go use it. It will destroy your M fellow. You won't finish your SAEP to get a degree. Who? This is my friend that is. He's now selling both food cry on the, on the street. That's what the person is. And all of that is blaming it on RLG laptop. Of that one person went to back according to him. And then the plug went off. What about the several ages that the thousands and thousands of students and workers and institutions are using that haven't gone off and go for warranty or what have you? You use this one person's 
unfortunate Yanom influence <laughs> effect to draw a conclusion. This is misplaced vividness where you could you can read it and enjoy. Okay, there are more. Genetic fallacy is also one of the fallacies. Remember, we saw this just last week as one of the causal fallacies. And I showed you that there you go. You are accepting or rejecting something because of its genesis, its origin, its roots, its history, its antecedent. Can anything good come from Nazareth? It's a genetic fallacy the genesis of it, okay? Sometimes you also accept it just because of where it comes from without any query. This is so-and-so nation made, but this other one came from so-and-so place. I overemphasized when we did unit nine together last year. So I'm sure you know it. Just for you to know that there are so many fine examples that you can enjoy to help you understand them, <clears throat> excuse me, of genetic fallacy. Now you see pseudo, Precision. I want someone to read that. So, Nanipia, hey, Nanipua, sorry, Nanipua, please read that uh, for me. Abuaje, be on standby. I've, Madam, is your example two? I have moved slides. God has been merciful to us. Who? Pseudo precision. How many see pseudo precision? Can see. I can't see it. Me, I can't see it. Please, I can see it. You can see it now, eh? Okay. That if what you can see, then go ahead. If not, then we, we switch quickly. Let's save the time. Go ahead. If not, George, is, George said he can see. He gave me a thumbs up. So then maybe George, George can read for us. Sorry, Daniel, for to come in. The young fish are go. George, then read for us because I think you, you gave me a sign that I can read. Are you able to read it? Oh, please, let's hurry up. I want to finish up nicely for you. They have the full one. Okay. Let's go ahead then. I think you can read for me. Pseudo precision. Exact statistical figures are used to characterize notions. That cannot be. Please, can you hear me? Yes. Okay. Exact statistical figures are used to characterize notions that cannot be expressed in exact or numerical terms. The application of figures to indicate precise quantities where, where to date no measurements can be physically what expected. It went off a bit. Please say it. Okay. So I should start again. Okay. Exact statistical figures are used to characterize notions that cannot be expressed in exact or numerical terms. The application of figures to oh. indicate precise quantities. Thank you, my lady. Ah. Um, I'm having network challenge. Network not started. <laughs> we will finish our thing very quickly. My lady, so let me just continue. It is a network thing that did that. Listen. The whole point is you are pretending to be precise about something that cannot be precise. Please, can you hear me? I, I got a notification on my screen, the poor network. I don't know. Can anyone hear me? Can you? Yes, please. Okay. So, yes, please. Excellent. Let's finish. Thank you, my lady lawyer. Eh? Let's finish. Please listen. This one is a bit technical as well, so I want to help you. Pseudo precision. Look at the name. Pseudo, we met it in unit seven, pseudoscience, uh, pretending to be science then. So pseudo precision means pretending to be precise. Why are we labeling it as pretending to be precise? You are trying to be exact. You are trying to be precise. You are trying to be determinate. You are trying to be specific about a concept that doesn't lend itself to, to precision. Because it is vague, that's the problem. 
what you are qualifying with 62.77, or you are trying to say 10%, 0.11, 10 of no, 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 that you are saying. The thing you are using 10.11 to qualify doesn't allow itself to be precise. It can't be precise. Do your figures are suspect? <laughs> you are made that is not able to be precise enough. You are trying to pretend to be precise about it. How are you doing that? Look on my screen. I've projected. You are putting figures that you claim you have calculated and come to. So, for example, look at my example one. In a recent two year survey, says a, a researcher. 75.38% of students at University of Ghana were discovered to be spiritually motivated. So we can confidently suppose that over three quarters of Lagos students on campus today are spiritually motivated. This is a pseudo precision argumentation. We will call it out. It is manipulating data, not language now, the data, the statistics. Why do you say that spiritual motivation? It's a big concept. Spirituality for someone is, is, you know that some are fasting now. For others, is I mean, how do you measure spirituality? It is so big a concept. You say you have come to do a research to measure University of Ghana student, not in your church, where we share a common doctrine or something, you have a, a, a fixed determinant of what makes someone spiritually motivated. No, you have come to University of Ghana. You, Mr. Researcher, we are critical thinkers. We raise questions. Listen, you say you come to do interviews, and when you finish, 75.38, this is where our problem is. Percentages that are supposed to suggest and present as if you are being exact per period, you know, are being precise. When we go and check what it is that you are trying to be precise about, the concept there is what? spiritual motivation. How can you be precise about the imprecise? So the figure you have put there doesn't mesmerize critical thinkers like Lady Lucy and myself. And all of you listening. I don't open. This one, na pseudo precision. So what, how do you say it? Your friend told you, look here. She says, when you try to use statistical figures, to characterize notions, concepts eh, that cannot be expressed in the exact or numerical terms. That notion cannot have a numerical expression. See, but you put figures there according to you. How you did that research earlier? Well, we don't know. See, so we call it out. Look at the second way of saying the same thing pseudo precision. You apply figures to indicate precise quantities where, up till today, no measurement can even be done. You can't even measure it. Yet you have measured and you have a certain called figure that you are presenting based on which IMF should come and give us funding or the, the invest. It can't work. It is pseudo precision. And I think that that one is clear now. Look at the third point that Lucy, uh, lady, the lady was going to, I think was, was going to read. Then the network started jamming up. Listen, it says this is often done to, ah, uh, or impress. You know how people must be that in case you hear, for example, you know, give the figure the fundamentals and it's so impressive. People like figures. It makes it look like a silence you be. I'm going to do the last one. Watch. That's what I'm, I'm introducing you to the last fallacy. So people are mystified. It demands me. That's why if you look into the text, you see that pseudo precision is also called mathematical mystification. You wanna ask? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> you, you, you use the mouse to uh, silence us, bully us. Go you see the 3.339% of doing so and so and so are heavenly minded. Heavenly minded, they are measure. How do you measure? How do you measure someone who is heavenly minded? 
in a secular institution like our own. How do you measure? Even God says, don't do it that even in church. You can't tell who okay, the guy that is dancing like that in the front there. Don't think he came to praise God. The pastor's daughter is the target. <laughs> Maybe, right? So you can't measure. It's not a measurable thing. You discern. If you are in the spirit, you discern. Yeah. Even the ones that are in the spirit, sometimes they can't tell which one is God that is saying. And which one? How can God say? To go and kill your son. Abraham. I is kill and eat. He says the thing is not clear. How can God be saying, I should be rise and kill that which he himself has said, has said is not clear? Saul of Old Testament, we go kill everybody that you hear. He went and left a few. God said, Why did you leave some? I thought God said that shall not kill. Some of the things are heavenly inspired. You have gone and say you have measured people who are spiritually motivated. By what standard? University of Ghana student? So it's a pseudo precision. It is a mystification with mass. Put the mass in dream, you know, so we are using the mass to bring mm -hmm. us. So we accept it without question. Critical mass. Our eyes don't open. We won't budge. It is a palace. Manipulating data. Okay. Now, this, the, the brother of that is semi attached figures, but they are not exactly the same. Here again, seemingly technical, but we are now take my time and help you. Let my colleague. If, let uh, Abuaji. Abuaji, are you able to read for us very quickly? Then I will mop it up nicely. And then we can go remember and look out for the in-person session. Okay. Abuaji, go ahead. Semi attached figures. Hello, can you hear me? Hello, can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you. Oh, I didn't see your first name. Yeah, yeah it's Stephina. Stephina. Yeah. Stephina. Did I pronounce your name well? Stephina. Ah, uh, wait, Stephen or Ba? Oh, Stephen. Stephen. No, go ahead, my lady. Okay, go ahead. A statistic figure is attached to a conclusion, but it is irrelevant to the attributes featured in the conclusion or indirectly related to it. When the sample is not relevant to the hypothesis, the figures provided may just be partially related to the hypothesis. This is done to deflect attention from the subject matter and create the impression that the conclusion has been meticulously researched. Meticulous of figures to divert attention. So this can fall under the fallacies that divert attention. In other words, they are fallacies of relevance, you see. At the same time, it is a use of what? Statistics. So it can still fall under the fallacy that manipulate uh, of this is to watch figures. They manipulate figures. Mathematics. on your man. But is this the same as pseudo precision or mathematical? Uh, mathematical mystification, not exactly so. This one has to do with the relevance. If you want to sell your alcoholic drink as a cure for COVID-19, there's someone arguing, but can't actually prove that it works, then simply publish your lab report demonstrating that half an ounce of your drink killed 99% of germs in kiosk COVID. But if you're struggling to show them, to convince the people to buy, just show that your drink or your whatever, your medication kills 99% of germs. See the shift? And if you show us that in the advert, that yeah, if you get Uncle Akroboto, he can do a fire advert for you. We put this thing, it has killed all the gems, 99% gems killed. We have a 99% oh, oh right this network saying, God, I beg you. Please, oh, uh -huh, it's gone. 
Can you hear me, please? I don't want you to lose it, so we don't struggle. Yes, please. 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 Yo, the 99% check the evidence. It's true that the product, let's say, a, a, I don't want to pick on any product because people are doing business, eh, but I'm trying to be creative about it. Let's say it's a hand sanitizer. If you show an advert that you see, when I put, when I put the germs, hand sanitizer on my hand. See, check it in the test. That is verifiable, scientifically. Then the person says, therefore, there comes the conclusion. Why we say it's a semi-attached figure. Therefore, Hello? Please, I can't hear. Please, I can't hear. Yeah, Me too, I can't hear. Looks like my dad's network. The network, the network. It's the network. It's the network. It's the network. It's the network. Please, can you go here? Please, can you go here? Yeah. 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 <laughs> Man, I mean, I I the class rep. Hmm? 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 Yapon, <laughs> Madame, wa are we Madame, I bet Max. Oh, yeah, be on their court. Oh, 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 Enrage, 
Please, have you closed the class? No, please. No. Thank you. Like the number I see you, that's why. Yeah, I don't know. Don't worry. Mom, I'm going to go to the house. I'm going to go to the house. The biggest fool. For free, hmm. I didn't need 246. So I got 53. Yeah. All right, hello, good afternoon. And um, this is Lucy, your TA for group one. So I just spoke to Dr. She's unable to join us, all right? So we are ending the class. But then she, she ended at 99%. So we have a sanitizer that says 19, it kills 99% germs. Therefore, you are concluding that your sanitizer kills the virus for COVID-19. All right, so that that is it. So thank you all for the class. Hopefully tomorrow we are going to meet online for our tutorials, and then weekend we are going to meet for our in-person section. Please do not miss the in-person section. Come with all your questions, all right, and let's have them answered. Please don't miss it. I, I know why I'm saying that. The I the, the kind of thing four roads is scary. Madam, please. So, <laughs> please. Madam, please, the time for the class. Oh, it will mm -hmm. be communicated to you on Sakai. We'll post the announcement there, all right? So, I think it's oh, from okay, 8 to 2. I think it's from 8 to 2. So, you choose any time that is favorable for you, all right? So, we'll post it, we'll post it on Sakai for you, all right? Thank you for okay. today's class. Hopefully, tomorrow we'll meet at tutorials or... Weekend we will meet face to face. Do have a lovely weekend. weekend. See you all soon. Thank you. Thank you. We love you, Lucy. My happy night. All right.